Hello, I'm Science Girl, and in this video I am making acetone from the calcium acetate I made in my first video. Unfortunately, I only do this video in two parts, as my heating mantle broke. I am not sure when part two will be uploaded, as I need to buy a new heating mantle. This experiment is a decomposition reaction. Decomposition reactions is where one reactant breaks down into two or more products. In most decomposition reactions, they require an energy input, and in this case, it is the heat provided by the heat heating mantle. In this decomposition reaction, we will see anhydric calcium acetate heated, and then it should decompose into the products calcium carbonate, which is a solid, and acetone, the liquid. Acetone is a compound that belongs to the ketones group. It is characterised as a colourless, transparent liquid, with a density lower than water, and a boiling point of 50 56.5 degrees Celsius, as well as having a very distinctive and sharp odour. Acetone is a very important and useful solvent in chemistry. It can break down and dissolve other substances. Not to mention it can remove my nail polish too. Now what are we waiting for? Let's get into it. I'm going to weigh the calcium acetate so I know how much I have. This is the calcium acetate I made in my first video. First I'm going to weigh the beaker, then I will subtract that from the result. Once again, this video has taken a while to make because I've been busy with school and I also got COVID so I couldn't film for a while. As said previously, this is a calcium acetate I made in my first video. If you haven't seen the, that video, make sure you check it out. I'll have that video as well as my other ones where I have made calcium hydroxide and flaming jelly in my description below. Because there are little chunks in the calcium acetate, I'm going to blend it so it is a fine powder. I am making it a fine powder because then that way, when it dries in the oven, it will be easier because it has a large surface area. I did this blending process in multiple batches, but only recorded the first batch. I'm now just going to shake around the calcium acetate to make sure it is evenly distributed. Then I put it in the oven for around 2 hours at approximately 120 degrees Celsius because I factored in that calcium acetate decomposes at 160 degrees Celsius. I put the acetate in the oven to evaporate any water since calcium acetate is extremely hygroscopic. Whilst the calcium acetate is in the oven, I am going to do some basic subtraction to work out the weight before drying. To do this, I am going to subtract 185.83 grams from 286 grams. Based off my maths, the calcium acetate weighs 100.17 grams before drying. Once the calcium acetate came out of the oven, I weighed it again. I did the same process as before, but I cut it out because he wants to see maths. The total weight after drying is 93.98 grams, meaning that 6.19 grams of water evaporated. Firstly, before I set up the condenser, I pour 93.98 grams of anhydrous calcium acetate into a 500 milliliter round bottom flask. Whilst pouring the calcium acetate, I should have been more careful there as I probably lost a few grams. The setup I use is a simple distillation. The diagram I made here shows the setup and lists all the equipment I have used. The equipment that I used include a scissor stand, a heating mantle, 500 milliliter round bottom flask, a three-way adapter, thermometer adapter and a thermometer, a condenser, a vacuum adapter, retort stands, clamps, 100 milliliter round bottom flask and kegs, which are not shown in this diagram. Now to set up the simple distillation setup. Firstly, I put a small amount of silicon lubricant on all the male joints. Once I have finished with the three-way adapter, I put it in the round bottom flask and then continue on with the rest of the male joints. Whilst putting the silicon lubricant on the male joints, I should have worn gloves, but because it is an inert substance, I chose not to. When spreading the lubricant across the joints, make sure it is spread evenly. Once all the male joints have been lubricated, I then raise the scissor stand and place the heating mantle on top of it. I raised the scissor stand too high, so I then had to lower it. I 
I then attach the three-way adapter to the condenser and the thermometer. The vacuum adapter is attached to a 50 milliliter round bottom flask, which is used as the receiving flask. Then I carefully raise the clamp and attach it to the condenser. The whole setup is supported by two retort stands, making sure that the condenser and receiving flask are secured by clamps. Here I place the cat clamps, making sure that the small part of the clip is orientated over the male part and the larger part of the cat is over the female part. Once everything has been set up, I turn on the heating mantle and turn on the water pump. The water pump is a normal fish tank pump that I have modified. Make sure there are no kinks in the tubing because otherwise the water will not be able to pass through. As you can see, the water goes from the bottom of the condenser to the top. After turning the heating mantle on, shortly afterwards they started to have condensation on the flask. This indicates that the calcium acetate is more hydrous than I would want it to be, and I probably could have left it in the oven a little longer. Unlike Nara Red's experiment, where the calcium acetate turned yellow, mine remained mostly white. However, it was acetone that was condensed which turned yellow. During the experiment, there was smoke that started to rise up the three-way adapter, which I thought looked pretty cool. To prevent too much heat from escaping the three-way adapter and to also help the acetone make its way to the condenser, I decided to insulate it using foil. This part was really exciting as it was the first drops. The first few drops were very slow, but then afterwards the drops became more regular. Here it is clear that acetone is being produced because of the way it is behaving, as water does not behave like that. When the reaction comes close to concluding, a large amount of white smoke was being produced. At the start of the experiment, there was no smell, but as the white smoke kept getting produced, there was a very pungent smell that is very hard to describe. Despite being in fast forward, towards the end of the experiment, the drops did start to slow down and then eventually stop. The white smoke that is being produced is highly flammable, as I demonstrate, by using a flash to capture it and then ignite it with a lighter. This whole process took roughly around an hour, excluding the time in the oven. Throughout the experiment, the calcium carbonate remained white. However, it turned black after it was exposed to oxygen. I forgot to mention, but at the end, I had 35 milliliters of acetone made. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I apologize for any shortness of breath or anything like that, as I am still getting over COVID.